All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be doing a review and head-to-head -head comparison of the SIG Kilo 10K versus the 6K rangefinder binoculars. I was in the market, I was looking all over, I couldn't find a direct comparison, so there was only one thing left to do, and that is buy them both and do it ourselves. So let's get into it. <laughs> All right, folks, so we're gonna jump right into this, but I do wanna kind of set some priorities because honestly, I think we could probably do a review video every single day for six months and not cover all the capabilities of these. Uh, these have some extensive electronic packages built into them, uh, ballistic computers, as well as being able to link up to other apps. But really my priority when I was personally trying to decide between these two devices was A, you know, is it a really good rangefinder? Are they quick, are they accurate? Uh, and B, you know, what type of optics do we have? Are these really good binos? I mean, that's really essentially what these are, right? A laser range finder with binos. Uh, and that's what I wanted to find out. So that's really where we're going to put the most emphasis on. But we are gonna touch on the ballistic solution capabilities of both of these devices and what you need to do to make sure those solutions are accurate. Um, we're gonna go through all the menus. We're gonna explore all that stuff as well as how they interface with Kestrels, your phone and other apps. And so we're gonna get heavy into that. There's a lot to cover with these things. I'm gonna put uh, you know chapter markers down below, as well as at the end of this, I'm gonna provide a summary of what I think is really good about these devices, uh, why I would choose one over the other, if I would choose either one of those. Um, and again, if these are devices that we really like, we're definitely gonna carry those in our online store as well. So we do appreciate the business. You know, when you buy from us, it does support us and the channel, and it really does allow us to continue to provide these educational videos for you so that we can provide you the information to make good decisions for you. That's really what it comes down to. So we appreciate the support and we appreciate when you purchase from us. All right, so I'm not usually big into unboxings, but I think when you're spending the type of money that you're spending on either one of these, as well as electronics in general, you kind of want to know what you're getting for your money, right? So we're going to unbox this so that you know exactly what we're talking about. We'll start off with the 6K. Now, obviously the 6K is a little less descript. You can see on the 10K, we got all kinds of, you know, marketing material, information. This is the 6K is a little plain. So take that for what it is. I don't know what that means. All right, so this is what you get right here. We have a nice pouch. Got that. We'll get to that in a second. We'll go ahead and open this portion up. We got our battery right there. All right, so we got our chest harness here. We'll, we'll play with that a little bit later. All right, so we also have some, I don't know, some other interesting material, quick start information, instructions, things like that on there. Let's see what we have here. Just initial thoughts. I mean, it feels really solid. They feel like a really nice, um, again, it reminds me of the Vector and the Viper that we had in the military has the same build feel. Uh, so it does feel solid. We have right here is where our battery port, obviously. So we're going to get a screwdriver, we'll open that up and we'll put the batteries in in just a second. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the 10 Ks. What I'm not seeing right now, that bothers me a little bit is some caps. Here's the 10 K. You get two batteries. And this one, you do get a wind meter with this as well. We will play around with that and compare it to the Kestrel. See what kind of readouts we get. And a much more robust instruction manual on here, which I'm sure we're gonna need that. I don't think there's any difference in specs. Um, I'll pull the specs up in just a sec after I get some batteries in them and we'll check that out together. All right, folks, so what we're gonna do right now is just kind of go through the specs of these. I'll make sure I post all this information up on the screen for you as well. Uh, just do a quick specifications comparison between these two and you can you know pause it, get a quick screen grab, whatever you need to do on that. Uh, so real quick, what these two have in common is both of these are 10 power by 42 millimeter objective lens. Now you can get the Kilo 6K in a more compact version, a 32 millimeter objective lens. Um, it can be tricky because more than once I saw the price for that and I was like, oh, they got it here for x -Men. Well, it, it's a different beast altogether. And I'll tell you just from really probably more personal preference uh, and experience, I guess, you know, the small price difference there is between the 42 millimeter and the 32 millimeter, you know, that 32 millimeter is a much smaller lens and I know what kind of impact that's gonna have on image quality 
personally, I would just go ahead and go for the 42 millimeter. I think there's a few other differences as well, but you can check that out. You know, maybe the 32 millimeter is perfect for what your needs are. Uh, but again, there's not that big of a price difference. And I will tell you, given that's a 10 millimeter difference in objective lens, it's gonna be a huge difference in image quality. It's just a fact. All right, so both of these are the same size. They're 5.7 by 2.5 by five inches. Uh, you guys can see how big they are there. Uh, the weight on these are 32 ounces. Uh, the waterproofing comparing these two. Folks, there's a big difference here. Uh, and this might be a big selling point or a reason to buy one or the other for you, but waterproofing on the 10K, surprisingly, is only IPX4. That means it's good for light splashes. It's moderately water resistant. Whereas the waterproof rating on the 6K is actually IPX7, which means it can be submerged under one meter of water for 30 minutes. So we have significant waterproofing on the 6K that we don't have on the 10K. Uh, that's actually a little disappointing. Uh, Runtime on both of these, they're both good for 4,000 ranges. The diopter on both of these has adjustment plus or minus three, which is pretty good. Uh, color availability on the 10K is FDE versus OD green on the 6K. The reticle on the 10K is 304 by 256 and it has an active matrix OLED whatever that means. Whereas the display on the 6K is segmented OLED. There's less words, so it must be not as good. And don't worry, I'm gonna actually show you video through both of these optics so you know exactly what you're getting into regarding image quality and the display quality. All right, so this is the big one, max ranges. On the 10K, we're looking at deer at 3,000 yards. Range on trees is 4,000 yards. Max reflective is 10,000 yards. On the 6K, we're looking at Range on deer, 2,000 yards. Trees, 4,000 yards. Max reflective, 6,000 yards. And again, those are things that we're gonna test, or at least we're gonna do our best to see how far we can get decent ranges on both of these and comparing, kind of contrast those two. Uh, there's a bunch of other mumbo jumbo when it comes to features. Uh, the 10K, you're getting Gen 2 light wave DSP ranging engine with extended range mode. Uh, you basically get, looks like, they don't say it, but it looks like it's Gen 1 light wave DSP ranging engine. You have onboard environmental sensors for real-time ballistic calculations on both. You can drop remote waypoints with the base map app on both of these. I actually purchased that. We're gonna go through that and see if that is worth purchasing. Uh, there's a $39 a year version and a $69 a year version. I went ahead for you, purchased that $69 a year version. We'll go real quickly through that when we get to that point, and I'll show you the different uh, features on that. And we'll see, I have no idea, we'll see how useful it is in conjunction with these two devices. All right, so this is also a big one. We have the Applied Ballistics Elite with complete AB bullet database, up to 25 custom bullet profiles and eight onboard ballistic groups with the 10K. On the 6K, you're getting the Applied Ballistics Ultralight with a bullet database that supports G1 and G7 drag models. So you're not getting the full capabilities of Applied Ballistics, but that might not matter. You might have it on your phone, you might have it on a Kestrel. We're gonna test all those things out. Um, I will say, what that tells me is that if you're only using your rangefinder, you're basically being limited to around 800 yards on most shots. Uh, basically, the AB Elite includes support for Coriolis effects, spin drift, and other factors while providing custom drag curves for the most accurate ballistic solutions in the industry. So again, you're gonna be limited a little bit with how far you're gonna be able to shoot. But I'll tell you what, if you're a hunter, that's probably not that big of a factor. Most people aren't gonna be shooting any sort of wild game out to 800 yards and some would even say that'd be unethical to do so. You do you. Uh, you get BDX 2.0 enabled with low energy, long range Bluetooth on both of these. Now, of course, the, one of the biggest deciding factors is price. So the MSRP on this guy is $3,249, $3,249. But the actual street price is around 2,500 bucks. Um, I don't know why they do that. Like just, you know you're not gonna sell it for $3,200. The MSRP on this is 1689, 
$1,689 and the street price is $1,299. So you can get both of these. Uh, I will tell you right now, if we decide to carry these, they're gonna be listed at the lowest possible price that we're allowed to advertise on our website. So you go to our website. If you decide at the end of this, you want this. If I decide at the end of this, we're gonna carry these and they're worth carrying because we're going through this together. I've never tested these. You see what I see. And if you want to know right now, you can jump all the way to the end of the summary and I'll tell you my thoughts on both of these after all the testing that we do. All right, so a couple of things I want as I was pulling this out and uh, preparing for the thumbnail for this video. Uh, I put batteries in both of these. I just want to kind of go ahead and hit on some things that I noticed. Number one, as far as build quality, man, these things are unbelievable. And we'll go into more details on all the features. Basically right here, we have a focus knob right there. And then of course we have our diopter adjustment right here at the back. Um, build quality on these is great. I really like this. I just kind of looked through them. I found the reticle on both of these to see what that display looked like. Uh, they look great. Two things that I gotta go ahead and point out right now that, that kind of irritate me a little bit is number one, they don't come with any sort of eye cups or anything like that. When you're hauling around glass this is expensive, I at least want the option to be able to put on some eye cups. I don't know if those things are available aftermarket or not. If there's not, there should be. Uh, the other thing that I noticed that I'm a little disappointed in is that there isn't a mount where a quarter 20 mount that we can mount these on tripods. Of course, you can put them up on a shooting bag or something like that on the tripod. Uh, I do, I'm almost positive they do make a adapter to where it'll allow you to amount to a quarter 20. So that's not that big of a deal. The other thing that I don't like that I'm not a fan of is the fact that, and I'll show you right here, folks, right here is our battery compartment. It's the same on both of them. Um, I'm actually a little ticked off that that doesn't come with a built-in lanyard. Should ha they should have a cable on that thing. Uh, if you're having to change these out in the field and you lose that battery cap, well, you know, your match is over, your hunt is over, whatever else you got going on, there should be a cabled lanyard on that. So SIG, fix that. All right, so I think the only thing that's left to do from here is actually get it out and test it. Both the image quality, uh, I wanna test the quality of the glass, see what kind of image. I have seen some moderate complaints in forums about that, especially on the 10K. Uh, we'll address that. And then of course, we're gonna go into actually testing the laser range finders on that, see if we're getting close to what you know manufacturer spec says. I'll tell you, I have another SIG range finder. It was a pretty expensive model at the time when it came out. Uh, and when it came to its ranging capabilities, I was severely disappointed. So I'm trying to save you that same disappointment. So we'll test those. We'll see what we're getting out of these things. Hopefully it is pretty darn close to spec. Uh, and then the other thing I'll be doing is rigging up some cameras so that you can get a view through this and hopefully see exactly what I'm seeing. But uh, yeah, let's get out of the studio. Let's go test these things. All right, folks, so I shot this out of order, but I thought this was a really important component of this review, and that was accessories. Because like I said, during the unboxing, I was extremely disappointed in the lack of accessories uh, for these two units. And uh, you're getting ready to watch the field test video in just a moment, which I think you're gonna find pretty interesting to say the least. So stand by for that. But for me, if I couldn't put these essentially on a tripod, this was almost a no-go. So I did some research for you. I found a, a really good solution for that. So first of all, we have the really right stuff. Uh, same item, two different versions of that. So we have the really right stuff, Cinch LR, and then we have the Cinch LR Elite. The only difference between those two is one is polymer. This is the polymer one uh, that I have on this one as well. And then they also make the Elite, which is uh, machined aluminum. And the machined aluminum one, that's 125 bucks, and the polymer version is 45 bucks. I ordered both just because I wanted to see if there was any sort of difference, mainly when it came to performance, uh, rigidity, any issues mounted on a tripod or anything like that. The answer is there's not. Um, I There is absolutely no reason to spend the 125 bucks on this. This does everything that you need to do. It's as durable as you need, to, need it to be. It's as rigid as you need it to be. Both of these have the quarter 20 mounts on the bottom. Um, I think that the polymer is gonna do everything that you need to do. Now, the Elite version is really nice, all right? It is, you know, if you like Gucci gear, that's Gucci gear. We don't sell those. I'll link both of those items below though. Um, I don't think that you need the aluminum version, but again, if you want it, it's there. Some people are gonna buy it and I get it. 
As far as lens protection goes, I didn't find a perfect solution, but I found a pretty good one. Um, it's actually a really good solution for the ocular lens. We have the Vortex Rain Guards for the Kaibob. Um, these fit perfectly like they were meant for it. Uh, we have some strap loops so that you can actually have your neck strap or this chest harness on there. Those work really good for protecting the ocular lens. As far as objective lens protection, I did find a pretty good option. It's not perfect, but these are the Vortex Viper HD 42 millimeter lens covers. Again, I'll throw a link down below. Uh, two issues with this. Number one, and I think it's a matter of you know, letting it rest there for a while, but I have had these lens caps kind of start to creep and squeeze off after a while. Um, and again, I think as they w sit there for a little bit and mold to it, uh, that problem will go away. But unfortunately, these are not compatible with the really right stuff, bino mounts. So just be aware of that. You know, especially with the 10Ks, which are kind of designed and built for competitive shooters primarily. Uh, I really do wish that SIG had made an integral mount uh, into the binos themselves that allowed you to use and, and included some lens protection on those. So they should have, uh, you know, built in a mount that was at least quarter 20, if not a Arca mount that allowed you to mount those directly to a tripod without any sort of adapters or anything like that. But it is what it is. And again, I wanted to make sure that I get that information to you because that was really important to me. And if I could mount those up to a tripod, like many of you out there watching this right now, um, you know, these would these would basically be a no-go for me. So again, I wanna make sure you have that information and at least gave you some options if you decided to buy these because the options are there. All right, so we're getting ready to watch that field test footage, but before we do that, if you like content like this, make sure you like this video, throw a comment down below, hit that subscribe button, but also make sure you hit that bell notification button. That lets you know when we make new content like this. And folks, Paramount Tactical is not a channel. Number one, we are a company, but more importantly, we are a community and we want you to be part of this community. So if you're not already, make sure you go follow us on our other social media sites. And every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we have our live Dangerous Liberty podcast. We have special guests on all the time. We talk about guns, gear, training, politics, you name it and just have a good time with it. But it's live and you get to join in on the conversation. You get to comment, you get to ask questions. We read those, we make sure we address those. You are a part of the conversation the entire time. So we want you to join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. live right here on Rumble and YouTube. So join us for that. And if you'd like to further support this work, uh, right here is our Patreon. If you would like to become a Patreon member and a contributor, we'd really appreciate that. All of that goes right back into this. We have several different tiers uh, and we try to make that a good value to you. So we try to make sure that we're giving back to you, but all that money goes right back into this channel to support the work that we do and we really appreciate it. But enough of the self-promotion, let's get over here. Let's get out in the field. Let's go do some testing on these things. What's happening folks, Gary here. So you can see I got a pretty ridiculous setup going on. Uh, I am on the side of a mountain in West Virginia, about two miles from my home and you can see the setup is pretty ridiculous, but we have the SIG Kilo 6K here and the SIG Kilo 10K. And this is the only place that I could find that actually had the line of sight that we need to really put these things through their paces. I wanna show you something too. My wife was kind enough for our anniversary. She got me this new lens. It is the Tamron 50 to 400. I'm gonna show you a shot because it can go from 50 millimeters, which is plenty wide enough to get my shot right over there all the way to 400 millimeters and really to 600 millimeters if I go into crop mode. I'm gonna give you guys a quick shot of that. But uh, this is what we're doing to get this done. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I'm gonna cut in right here with a nice shot of beautiful West Virginia. <music> All right, folks, so this is actually a perfect day to test uh, any sort of optics. We got a lot of haze out there, it's cloudy, we got some changing light conditions. This is when optics clarity starts to fall apart because, because of the changing light conditions and because we don't have you know uh, just a ton of light. Um, so it's a perfect day for testing that. Now, what I wanna tell you folks is I'm gonna look through both of these. I guess I might as well, I'm in front of the 10K, we'll start on the 10K. I'm gonna look through these and give you my subjective opinion on the glass quality of both of these. With that being said, I'm trying to be as objective as possible. And I'm telling you right now, in a few minutes, we're gonna be hooking up that Tacticam uh, spotting uh, camera up to these things. 
and you're probably gonna be seeing something very different than what I'm seeing. When I go to edit this, I will try to get it as close to reality as possible. But there again, once you start compressing that footage into a editor, and then it gets compressed and that footage gets downgraded even more when we put it in YouTube. So just realize that also it might help if you change your viewing settings on YouTube or Rumble to the highest quality that, I don't know if it'll give you 4K or not. But anyways, all right, so let's look through this and check this out, see what we got going on as far as the image goes. First of all, this image is really good. It's actually better than what I was expecting. Um, one thing I will immediately confirm, if you're checking these out, if you go look on forums or reviews or anything like that, one of the things that people will talk about on the 10K specifically is that there's a bluish green tint. There is no doubt about it, there is a bluish green tint to it. With that being said, I was expecting it to be, as much as I heard people complaining about it, I was expecting the image to be much worse. I'm seeing good contrast. I'm seeing good, I mean, just excellent detail on this. Um, I'm looking at these houses right now. I can see extremely good detail. I can see Mirage. If I was spotting with this, let me see what this house is. Uh, this house, oh man, you gotta see the display on this thing. It is actually pretty remarkable. So this house is 1824, uh, 1,824 yards that I'm looking at. Folks, I see excellent detail on that. And if I was spotting for somebody and they were shooting at a target at that distance, I would be able to see the trace on it. I would be able to see impact or miss. Uh, excellent, excellent. There's a greenish blue tint, there's no doubt about it. Um, is it as good as like a Leica GeoVid or you know, a Swarovski L? No, but both of those models are more expensive than this. So keep that in mind. All right, let's just do a real quick range finding and then I'll have you I'll do the exact same thing with you guys when you're looking through this all right so I'm ranging this house this house is 1824 got another house right here that's 2313 got another house over here or a barn 20 that one's also 2323 this house is 1944 push it out a little further dude the menu on this is amazing I, I love this menu it's super easy to navigate through unlike most rangefinders all right so let's try to get some a little bit further targets i got a 44 47. all right so 44 47 is the furthest target i've gotten a readout on folks i love that rangefinder that you click it once and it gives you it either does or it doesn't but you get basically feedback immediately i have it in the elr mode uh the extended range mode um you know, like I said, there's no doubt there's there's this bluish tint to it. I, I'm not seeing that as a major distractor. If what you're looking for is a rangefinder that is gonna laze the, the distance this is right now, uh, on top of that, have all of your ballistic applications built into this and be able to give you ballistic solutions almost immediately. Um, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. I wish I could get out a little further. There's a, there's some, anyways, we'll, we'll show you that in a minute. All right, let's take a look at the Kilo 6K. All right, so as far as image quality, let me look at the exact same thing. Sharp as possible. All right, I'm looking at that house. Maybe it's because of the slight green tint. The 6K does feel sharper, right? Did the image just a little bit sharper? Yeah, I mean, the image out of this is excellent. Uh, it definitely, the image quality is a little bit better out of the 6K than the 10K. The display on the 10K is amazing. As far as binos goes, these, you get better color, you get a little bit better clarity. This house is over here is kind of a, a yellow. Um, through here, I can kind of tell it's yellow, but because there's a, a green overlay or green tint, doesn't give you the most accurate color. There's no doubt about it but I still think everything in this is pretty usable. So take that for what it's worth. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna just gonna pause real quick. I'm gonna throw the Tacticam up on this and uh, show you guys the difference. Hopefully we can get some really good, accurate footage through that. We'll see how it works. All right, so the first thing I really wanna show you is the display on this. The display on this one is absolutely phenomenal, but there is that house that was clearly yellow and I'm gonna end up doing this side by side. So, uh, but check out that display, folks. That display is pretty freaking phenomenal. I'm gonna, all right, so I had to stop it right here and address this. Folks, this image that I'm showing you right now is not what I was looking at. It's not the same image that I, and you gotta understand that folks. And I almost, I'm almost a little conflicted to even post this video. I'm going to, but 
this really does, you know, both of these optics a disservice. And this is the challenge of filming through an optic. Again, this is the device I was using, it's the Tacticam Spotter. It works great when you're just trying to, you know, show someone what you're shooting or something like that. But when we start looking at, when we're trying to get the fidelity that we're trying to get to show how well an optic works or anything else, this camera with this tiny little sensor just doesn't have the ability. And the other problem here is that, you know, when I was looking through this, it's perfectly focused for my eyes. But then when I put this on there, the image is not focused for this. I think I clear this up a little bit later on and I, I dial in the focus because we have this tiny little monitor on the back of this and I can only see so much detail on the back of this. Uh, so what I typically do is I bring an additional monitor or an iPad and I try to use that to hopefully see a little bit better detail. Um, and try to get it as focused and as clear a picture as possible. Uh, even the colors and everything else right here don't represent what you're really seeing through this. It is, it is a much, it is five or six times better in person than what you're seeing through this, and I just need you guys to understand that uh, with both of these optics. Um, this, I, again, the green tint and the 10K does distort some of the contrast, um, it does distort some of the colors slightly, not nearly to this degree. And this is the major challenge of trying to do reviews on these different optics and then show the viewer what I'm seeing because all these different devices so far that I have bought to film through an optic just doesn't do that optic justice. Just understand the limitations of what we're trying to do and understand that it is a, not a real representation of the quality of that optic. So. Just keep that in mind. So let's laze this thing. Look how fast that is, folks. That is super fast. Let me try to sharpen this image up. There we go. All right. Again, folks, that's another problem is like, you know, what is, and look, look at that image. It's, the, the, the display on this is awesome. So one of the problems when you're filming through here too is what is focused to your eye is not necessarily focused to the camera. So that's just one of the things that, uh, we gotta kind of deal with. But folks, the, the detail on this is still good, but you can see right here that yellow house, and I'll end up putting these images side by side so you can see the difference. There is a clear color distortion with the way that this lens is coated. And the main purpose of that, from what I understand, is, is so that the display works as well as it does. And I want you to check out this display, by the way. Folks, check that out. Super crisp, super awesome. I actually want you to see as this thing times out. I want you to see the, the SIG display, um, and then we'll actually, I'm gonna show you the menu as well. Look at that, that looks that looks sick. All right, so let's turn this thing back on. Now I wanna show you this, this menu. So I'm gonna hold down the menu button. Look what we have, folks. So we can go down here, we can see all the different things that we can change about this. Um, just super easy to use, much more intuitive and much easier to navigate than the 6K by far and, and most range finders in general. So we'll choose that, we're back here. So here we are folks, look what you're getting, look at all the data that you're getting with this. Um, getting You're getting the yardage, DA, uh, if, again, it, I don't have anything programmed into here. I think there's some presets, some bullet presets and I think it's on like, you know, 308 or something like that. But you're immediately getting the ballistic solution on that. You're getting the density altitude. We have the onboard electronics that are reading out our environmentals and stuff like that. So uh, very informative display. Right now I have the reticle set to where we're using a grid and or a mill pattern there. Let me, let me go through here. Let's see if we can't change these units real quick. We're gonna go, got it on range mode. By the way, on the range mode, I have it on the BDX Elite target mode. Right now I have it on extended range because we are trying to get as much range out of this range finder as possible. Uh, unit of measure, we got distance, yards, temperature, Fahrenheit, wind, DA, MRAD, holdover MOA, that's stupid. We got that, Imperial, good. All right, let's range this guy. 1944, there you go. You got your, all your ballistic solution there. Let's go over to here. Let's 
Let's get this guy. I'm not getting that one. I'm not getting that one. I think the furthest lays we got on the other one was 2,600 yards, which is right around in there. It was like that. 2624. 2499. I did get this one a couple times. Four sixty seven on ELR mode, you hold it down. Oh, well, I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed that we're not getting at least that one. That was probably gonna be about 27, 2800. There, I'm gonna try to focus this a little bit. Not that that would affect the lays, but still. When we zoom in, folks, you can see how clear this is. I'm, I'm going to do it with the other one, too. Playing around with the focus knob right now. But the, the clarity's there. You know, I mean, we're getting good. We're getting good resolution throughout everything. Um, it does affect the color a little bit. There's no doubt about it. All right, so as you guys can see, the color looks pretty good on this. Hopefully, that looks like a realistic color. You're seeing some of that blowout from the display. That is not accurate. So we're seeing 18, 20. 18, 20 on that house. Uh, we have this house over here. 1942, so we're getting 2023. Well, let's see if we can get this tree right here. So that's 2497 to that tree. Twenty four ninety one, base of it. Uh, let's see if we can get this house. I think this is the one that I was getting 44 and change. I think it was 44.47 on the 10K. We're clearly not gonna be able to get that. And then folks, here's the menu on this. So you can kinda, I'd have to get in there and actually play around with this menu. Uh, not all that intuitive. Let's see if we can get anything else here. 768, 91.94, 2023, 22.92. But it doesn't look like we're gonna be getting these guys. And folks, that haze that you see out there, that is not the lens. And uh, I don't know, maybe you can, let me see if I, can I sharpen this up if I focus? I mean, that is, that is exactly what we're seeing out here. We got a little bit of haze in the sky. You guys see what's going on there. This is actually a pretty darn true to life picture right here. Hopefully we're gonna maintain this when we go to when I actually go to edit this. Let me see if there's anything else that we can see or get. I think we already tried this one. Let's see if, that's 2463 on trees. I was hoping with this house, 
some of these reflective surfaces. We get a little bit further out. That's probably a three something. So I think that what the furthest target we got, that's 2,600. It's pretty impressive that we're getting 2,600 on trees. All right, so I'm gonna put these images up side by side just so that we can try to get a good idea of, or at least a, a realistic perspective of the image quality. You know, with the 6K, I think that you're getting a, a little bit higher fidelity on the image. Uh, most of that is probably due to, you know, they're putting that blue haze in there essentially so that the, uh, the display works like it does. Um, with that being said, man, I, I do like that display. I love the fact that that menu is so easy to navigate, uh, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed at the ranges that I'm getting on that. With that being said, we did hit 44.47 once. We're sh you know, hitting all the way out to 2600. You know, the thing is with that, with one device, you're getting your laser range finder, a decent set of binos, and a ballistic solution all the way out to, you know, definitely beyond 3,000 yards. So, um, I don't know. There's lots of pros and cons to weigh on these two. I think at this point, we got a pretty good idea of the image quality on both of these. I also think that we have a pretty good idea on their range finding capabilities. So anyways, let's get off the corner here. Let's get back to the house. We can talk a little more about it back there. All right, so after spending some time with these, both these devices, especially on the 10Ks, um, I think it, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't spend a little bit more time digging through the electronics, testing those out on the range before I gave you, or actually included it in this review. On top of that, it'd just be too long. So I'm gonna spend some more time and I'm gonna separate these, at least do an additional video, if not a couple, because like I said at the beginning of this, is as complex and as many different functions that the 10K especially have we could do a video a day for you know six months and I don't think we would cover it all. So I'm gonna separate that portion from this review and limit this review to the overall glass quality and the laser range finding capabilities of both of these. I will tell you just on preliminary test, I'm getting the same readouts from this as I am on my Kestrel. So I haven't found too many issues with AB software in general, but I do want you to understand the limitations of this particular review. It's not necessarily a full endorsement, but I will talk more about that in just a second. All right, so let's talk about what we did find, the negatives, we're gonna go through the negatives on both of these so that we can end on a positive note. So on the 10K ABS HDs, uh, the negatives I saw on this is, and really this goes with both of these devices, is that the LRF ranges are nowhere near advertised. You know, that's something that we continue to see from almost every company that produces a rangefinder. It is not uncommon from every company to get about half the range that they advertise. So we need to be aware of that. On the 10K, the max I was able to get, and it was super inconsistent, like one out of 50, um, was 44.47. And that was on a house. The average max range I was getting out of that was around 2,600, and that was on trees. Uh, you know, they advertise 3,000 yards on deer, 4,000 yards on trees, and 10,000 yards on a max reflective target. Just don't expect that. And if you know that going in, and you understand what the capabilities of this device are, I, I think you'll be good. On the 6K, the max, the max target I was getting was 2622. And again, they advertise deer is 2,000 yards, trees 4,000 yards, reflective 6,000 yards. And understand too, that was testing these under the conditions that I was testing. On a brighter day with less fog and kind of less haze out there, we would probably get a little bit better. I think you can expect on steel targets to get around 3,000 yards pretty easily, pretty consistently. I didn't get a chance, I don't even have a place uh, currently where I can test 3,000 yards on a steel plate. But I think on a white steel plate, you can probably expect to run 3,000 yards pretty consistently in most conditions. The number two negative on both of these was the lack of accessories. I, I covered that. There's no integral mount. There's no lens protection. I think that's just horse to be honest with you. Um, and at the price point of these, I think those should come with both of those. Or at least accessories that allow you to, to mount these designed by SIG so that you can mount these to a tripod. Negative number three, specifically to the 10K, is that blue-green lens tint. Um, that is there so that you can have the display that you get out of this thing. I'm sure both of these come with the exact same lens quality, uh, it, but that blue-green lens tint definitely 
diminishes contrast a little bit. So you get a little bit less image fidelity with these. There's no doubt about that. Negative number three for the Kilo 6K was that hard to navigate menu. It's more of a traditional menu. If you've used laser range finders before that do have a menu option, uh, but it's just not nearly as, as a nice solution as what you're getting out of that. Negative number four for the 10K, and it's kind of a big one, is that IPX4 water resistance rating. Uh, given that these are not fully waterproof, uh, again, that can be a big decision for many of you out there. Negative number four for the 6K is that limited AB software. You're getting the uh, Applied Ballistics Ultralight. I would have liked to have seen this exact same model but it come with an elite or at least a more robust version of the applied ballistic software. All right, negative number five for the 10K, I mean, it's gotta be the price, right? We're talking about 2,500 bucks. It's not a cheap piece of kit. Uh, we will be carrying them on our website for the lowest possible advertised price. Again, we are gonna carry them. I know I've hit a lot of negatives, but I do think both of these offer something that just isn't available in, in any sort of other type of package. So I do think they're worth carrying as long as you know the limitations of them. Um, if you are buying them based on what SIG says, you know, it doesn't make sense. But if you do decide to purchase either one of these, we'd really appreciate it if you purchase through us. Again, it really does support the channel and allows us to do educational videos like this. But we're at least gonna be upfront with you, tell you exactly what to expect uh, and know the exact capabilities and what you're getting for your money. So take that for what it's worth. All right, so now let's get into the positives because I think there is some big positives on both of these units. Number one, even though it's far below what advertised, you're getting excellent laser range finding capabilities comparatively to what is on the market on both of these. Um, I also like the fact how fast these are. Now we saw when we are in the XLR mode, as long as it's hitting, it's hitting and it's coming back quick. Uh, typically, if there's a lag, it means you're just not gonna get any sort of readout. And it's trying, 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 only to come back and tell you that it's not getting that readout. And it's not able to get a range on that particular item. But when it is hitting an item that's gonna give you a return on, both of these are extremely fast, and I like that. You know, going back to the 6K, I don't know if I covered it really well, but you know, we were getting the max 2622 on this, I believe is the furthest I was able to laze. But the fact of the matter is we were getting 2,600 yards regularly with the 6K. So, I mean, it's right there with this in those conditions. You gotta keep that in mind. Laser range finders are gonna give you different results in different environmental conditions. It's just a fact. But this was hanging right there as far as max range that we were getting consistently. So that needs to be part, or you at least need to know that when it comes to a factor in your decision-making process. Both of them, I think, again, are giving us good laser range finding capabilities and, and, and covers 90 plus percent of all shooters out there. Most of us are not shooting out to 3,000 yards. Most of us are not shooting out to 2,000 yards. So having a device, regardless of what they say, is giving you consistent results. 2,600 plus is, is, again, it's a very capable unit. It's something that would cost you 10 times the price just a few years ago in either one of these. Uh, positive number two, for the 10K, the display and the menu. Folks, I love that menu. It's awesome, it's a heads up display. It's giving you all the information you need. I will take a little bit of degraded image quality for that menu. I love how easy the, the menu is to navigate, how easy it is to set up. Um, I love the fact that right in that heads up display, I'm getting our density altitude, we're getting direction, we're getting range, we're getting the bullet rifle information right there. So I know that I'm actually using the right setting and I'm using the right data for what I'm shooting. So I really, I love that. To me, that is a huge consideration and why for my purposes, I'm a little bit more personally drawn to this one. So to me, that, that's a big deal. Positive number two for the 6K image quality. Folks, the image quality on this is excellent. I would rate the image quality on the 6K to probably be eight and a half out of 10. Uh, it is not, you know, Swarovski good, uh, probably not quite as good as Leica, but again, you're paying more for those. So if I am just wanting binos, a really good set of binos with a really good range finder, this makes a lot of sense. Positive number three for the 10K, full AB Elite software. I love the capabilities of that. I, I, I love that, right? So 
Again, this is a genuine three-in-one device. You know, this one device has taken the place of a good set of binos, the Kestrel AB Elite, and a laser rangefinder. So you got to weigh if that's worth 2400 bucks for you um, or not. But, I mean, I do like the fact that we're getting the Kestrel Elite in that. I'm going to go ahead and hit positive point number five on the 10K before I hit the final one on the 6K. So point number five for the 10K. Image quality, it's still really good. Uh, I lot, read a lot of information, people complaining about it. I understand where they're coming from, I understand their point, but it's still really good. Um, you know, it's gonna be more than adequate for, again, 95% of most people out there. So, you know, I would rate the image quality on this a seven out of 10. Um, so it, it, it's, it's still pretty good. And of course, that's gonna come down to a little bit of preference and what you're used to. If you're running around with Swirls or other high-end binoculars, um, you might find the image quality a little bit disappointing, but hopefully we were able to show you and, and know exactly what to expect before you go out and spend the money that you're gonna spend on these. Positive point number three for the 6K and this and the last one, but I think this is a huge one. At 1300 bucks, I think these represent the absolute best value that is currently on the market when it comes to a range finding bino. You're getting excellent glass, really good glass, huge capabilities when it comes to range finding with the benefit of having some ballistic solution capability built in. And, and, and by the way, especially for hunters, more than enough for 95, 99%, definitely 99% of all hunters out there. I think if you look at these as I'm getting really good binos with a really good range finder built in, and then, you know, the AB software that comes with it is just a little bit of bonus. And of course, and I haven't tested that, but theoretically these can also link up to your Kestrel. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds in that. And I think these are a huge value. And I know even though that they are coming far below what SIG said as far as their range capabilities, I think what you're getting is a really good value. So, you know, considering the positives that we highlighted on this, I do think these are worth carrying. Um, I, I endorse them for what I've covered so far. And again, we maybe we end up running into some problems with the electronics of those. I don't think that, but again, I just want you to know that I haven't covered that. Uh, but I think these currently offer some things that just aren't offered in other devices in the market. So I think it's worth carrying. And I think based on what we've learned so far, it offers a good value to you. And at least you know what, what to expect. And with all of that being said, I'm sure there's some things I left out and didn't answer all the way. So if there's questions you have that I didn't answer in this video and I have those, leave those down in the comment below. I will get to those as quickly as possible. If there's some other things that you would like to see tested that I didn't test, make sure you leave that in the comments down below and I'll try to include that in the future part two of this review where we're gonna get into uh, all the electronics and the ballistic solution software as well as linking between devices all that good stuff. Well, folks, you know, Wild Guns and Gear is great. What we're really about is training, so make sure you go to ParamountTactical.com. Go check out our upcoming training schedule. We'd love to have you out. We'd love to meet you in person. We offer long-range courses, tactical carbine, handgun, medical courses, driving courses, on-road and off-road. So make sure you go check out that training schedule and come train with us. You'll be glad you did. And for all your gear needs, make sure you go to ParamountTactical.com where we only sell items that we've personally tested and we believe in. And we believe that everything we put on our website is a direct reflection of our credibility and our reputation so you can buy with confidence. But until next time, stay armed, stay ready. We'll talk to you soon.